is, like I said, synced up to their audio. So as you all know, my name is Morgan Coven. I am the student programs coordinator for IABA. And I do want to go through our housekeeping rules. Just make sure that you have your cameras on so that we can see your lovely faces. Uh, and also, if you have any questions right now, just keep your mics off. But if you do have any questions, you can either drop it in the chat or you can raise your hand. And I will be monitoring that and we'll be able to call on you and get your question answered if you have one, okay? Uh, and also remember to just be on the lookout for emails from me regarding the boot camp and other programming that we have here going on at IEBA. And yeah, I, like I said, I'm, I'll be over here letting people in and want to kick it over to our speakers. Uh, today, we are talking about personal branding and we have two wonderful people here and I'm gonna go ahead and let them introduce themselves so that you can get to know a little bit more about them. Okay, so as always, I don't wanna talk too much so we can give our speakers some time to speak. So I'll go ahead and stop talking and let them go ahead and take over. Thank you, Morgan. And hello, good evening, everyone. It's so great seeing like all the, the names kind of come up and get the videos all pop up. That's really cool. Um, my name is Delisa. I am super excited to wrap up this year's boot camp with a conversation around personal branding. Uh, we have some really great content planned for this specific module. Um, so before we even dive into all of that, let's start with uh, just some introductions. So my full name is Delisa Beatty. I am a property and casualty actuary with Guide One Insurance, and I've been working in the insurance industry for the last 12 years. Um, I'm an active member of IABA and have been part of this community since my time in undergrad at the University of Texas at Austin. I am currently based in Dallas, Texas, and absolutely enjoy opportunities like this to connect, collaborate, and hopefully serve you in a way that allows you to succeed uh, in the future moving forward. Um, so Anagra, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, thank you, Lisa and Morgan. Um, I'm very, very happy to be here. Uh, I'm also part of Guide One Insurance and I've been a PNC uh, entry you're going to say anything? Yeah. Anagra, yeah, I was going to say, Anagra, <laughs> I hate to interrupt, but if you could speak a little bit, a little bit louder, so there's so everyone, everyone can hear you a little bit further away. Yeah, definitely. Uh, okay. Am I getting clear? Yeah. It's still a little yeah. muffled. Okay. Um, I will try to, I, I, I will hate to interrupt guys, right? Um, technical issues. I will try to switch over to um, probably my phone and maybe see if that will be better. Okay. Uh, yeah, let me let me try to do that. Uh, but hey, I will introduce myself. I have a segment where I talk more about what, you know, my, I have a separate segment where I talk more so I can give further introduction about myself before we start here. But I'll let Delisa take on here and get started so that we don't waste any time because we have a lot of great content for you guys. So we want to make sure that we get everything out there for you guys to, to see. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. Yeah, let's do, a, we'll do a quick audible here. Um, so in terms of an agenda for this specific session, we'll really spend the majority of our time talking about personal branding over three separate chunks. So to start, we will have some dialogue around what personal branding means, why is it important? And then ultimately, what you can do today to start thinking about your brand and to start building it the way that you want it to be. So that last part is very important because it's the application piece of it all. This session is also meant to be interactive. Um, so there'll be a few different opportunities for you to engage with us. I really encourage you all to be brave. I know sometimes it can be a little bit awkward and uncomfortable. Uh, but really think about that person that you aspire to be, and I challenge you to be that on this particular call here. Um, so this is a safe space. We'd love to hear from you. And then, of course, 
at the very end, we do have a Q&A, so we'll entertain any questions you have as well at the end. So to kick us off here, let's just start with a very simple question. What do you think about when you hear the words personal branding? You can drop your answers in the chat. Okay, I see reputation from Greg. Thank you, Greg. Anyone else? Also feel free to come off mute. Yeah, if you have to come off mute, let us know what do you think when you hear personal branding? Someone said public perception. Public perception. I love that. That's a great comment, Doris. Public image from Eric. Skill set from Felix. Okay. Those are all good. Um, if you have any other thoughts, definitely feel free to, to drop them in the chat. Um, so those are all really good points around uh, personal branding. We also have unique image of yourself. I like that one from Bernice. That's great. <clears throat> so personal branding is, is definitely all of those things. I've uh, got another one here. It's how one promotes his or herself. Yeah, I feel like you guys like have already looked at this deck. <laughs> already and has just kind of sprinkled in what we're what we're planning to talk about, which is awesome. That's great. Okay, so let's take a look at some some other perspectives on personal branding. Um, Anagra, if you could flip the slide here. So <clears throat> on this particular slide, we have some different takes on personal branding. I'm not going to go through all of these, but based on what we see so far, it's pretty apparent that there's not really a, a real true solid definition on personal branding. In fact, personal branding, it's been around for decades, but throughout most of that time, it's been a marketing strategy used largely by big companies to differentiate themselves in the market. If you fast forward to present day, we now see branding being embraced more by individuals and also used as a mechanism for individuals to take more ownership over their careers and future opportunities. Technology and social media, that's also accelerated the need for personal branding. And honestly, it's taken personal branding to like a whole new level of importance. So it makes sense that we see different takes on personal branding because it's still relatively new, it's still developing. With that said, though, I think there are a few different themes that are really worth pointing out here. First and foremost, personal branding is a process. We see process pop up a couple of different times on this slide, and it's also something that can just be gleaned just by the nature of the work that's required in order to build an effective brand. And we'll kind of get into process and maybe what that might look like for you a, a little bit later on in this discussion. And then secondly, personal branding is effort. It's work. It really requires you to be present and really intentional about how you show up in interactions with people. And then the last one I'll touch on is image. Actually, image came up, I think once or twice um, in the chat earlier. We see PwC classify it as, quote unquote, it's your reputation. And then we also see words like identity that pop up. All of these things tie back to your image and how you want to be seen by others. So all in all, we have process, effort, image. Those are the three elements of personal branding that I want you to take away from this slide. And we'll touch on all three of those throughout our discussion. So speaking of image, when it comes to images and branding, companies invest a lot of time and a lot of money into building the right image for their brand. They wanna make sure that they're grabbing their ideal customer and making it super obvious as to what makes them different from the rest of the pack. Let's take Apple, for instance. This is one of my favorite examples 
because I actually own quite a few like Apple products in my household. Um, when I think about Apple, I think of things like innovative, modern, uh, sophisticated, elevated. The image that's on the bottom right is mostly focused on privacy and privacy is very relevant to today's world or in today's world. But it's also something that Apple harps on a lot because they're not only trying to sell you a phone, but they want you to buy into their whole ecosystem of Apple products. And that starts with them getting, with them getting you to see them as someone who can protect their information. So when you think about all these things and the amount of work that companies put into branding, the same logic applies to individuals and personal branding. In order to create a strong brand, you have to be consistent in the way that you promote yourself and the image that you're giving. So in other words, the more consistent you are in what you're presenting, the more powerful your image will be to someone else. So at this point, you right. might be thinking, did I hear something? No, I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to move on. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so at this point, you might be thinking, well, Delisa, I'm not really a well-established company. How does this fit into where I am today on my actual journey? And it's important to remember that you are in fact a company and you are in fact the CEO of your own company. So therefore you have full autonomy over your brand and you can establish and shape your brand based on what I like to think are the three Ps. And those three Ps are personality, perspective and performance. All three are important and will contribute to your brand in, in some shape, form or fashion. Early on in your career, the first two Ps will have a lot more weight on your brand. So interviewing, networking, your online presence on social media platforms like LinkedIn, Facebook, Insta, Twitter, those are all outlets where you're showing your personality and your perspective. And you wanna be mindful of this because employers, they often evaluate all those things in order to form an opinion about you. So again, going back to your image and being consistent about how you wanna promote yourself professionally. And then your performance is an area that will become more credible once you enter the workforce. This component will really define how people view you from a working standpoint and can also determine where your career goes in terms of future opportunities when it comes to things like roles, promotions, projects, et cetera. So when it's all said and done, your personal brand is simply that final outcome of how you show up in interactions with people. And throughout your journey, you're gonna have a ton of interactions and you're gonna have a ton of interactions with people. Um, so a very continuous loop um, with lots of opportunity for you to be consistent and really kind of shaping your brand. It's also important to address a few other things. Um, so on the left here, I have some things about your brand that I think are true. While on the right hand side, you get a dose of some common misconceptions about your brand. And so in the interest of time, I'll only touch on the ones that I consider to be valuable. So first off, your personal brand, and this might be super obvious, your personal brand is you. The more you know about you and are comfortable in that space, the easier it will be for you to promote yourself in the best light possible. The other thing is that um, because your brand is you, your brand is always evolving. It's only natural that as you grow in your career, and then even as you grow as an individual outside of your career, your brand is also growing too. And it's very likely that your brand in year one is going to look different 
from your brain in year five or even year 20 for that matter. And then flipping over to the misconception side, you might be thinking that you need to be an extrovert to have an effective brand. And that's just simply not the case. Personal branding does not discriminate based on personality types. And speaking from someone with experience, and I'm also an introvert too, um, introverts can win in this arena and they can have effective brands. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, see someone recognizes, Greg recognizes. <laughs> All right, and then the last point I will touch on this one is that you also don't need to be an expert on a particular um, topic in order to have a brand. You just need to be an expert on yourself and we'll walk you through an exercise that will help you with that in that particular area. Okay, so now that we have an idea of what personal branding means, let's shift gears a bit and just talk about why it's important. So to start, we've touched on this a little bit already. Personal branding allows you to control how you want to be seen. Taking ownership of who you are professionally and promoting yourself in a way that speaks to your strengths and communicates your skills and your goals, that is a great way to lead. We hear words like leaders and leadership and often think that that's like the gold standard. But it's important to remember that good leadership starts with yourself and personal branding goes hand in hand with that. The second thing, and I think this is a big one here, this is actually my favorite one. Um, personal branding gives you the space to make stronger connections with people. And this middle picture says it all. When I look at this middle picture, it's, I see a network of people. And in this picture, you can kind of think of yourself as the middle where all the hands meet. And personal branding, it helps with that. It helps you create and build a solid network of people that you value, that you trust, and that you care about. And over that time, you and your career will reap benefits from that, that network. So personal branding is a great vehicle to building a, a really solid network. And then the last point there is that personal branding helps you differentiate yourself in a competitive market. And you might be thinking, well, Delisa, there isn't really anything about me that stands out from the rest of the pack. And I am here to tell you that you being you is, is really all you need. It's so important these days to be true to who you are your boss, your colleagues, your, your peers, they're all looking to meet the real you and, and not a, a fake persona. So showing up as like your authentic self is gonna go a long way in your career and in your personal development. So before we move on, I did see a couple of things pop up in the chat. Um, might be a good opportunity to go ahead and address them. Unless if my eyes were mistaken. No, somebody asked, does personal branding help helps in like tr build, building trust as well? There you go. Yeah, that's a good question, Jacob. I would say yes, it definitely does. Um, when we think about building connections with people, um, connections are oftentimes strengthened through through having like trust and being able to build trust. So 100%, I would say personal branding does help with, with building trust. All right. Well, I think this is a great opportunity to switch over. I'm gonna hand it over to Anagra. Are you good on audio, Anagra? Um, can you guys hear me? Perfect, oh, yes. Oh, mate, I am so relieved. Once again, sorry guys for the technical issues. You know, that's something we see every single day and uh, that's kind of become part of our life and adapting to it, I guess, is the best we can do. So I'm re really happy to be here. Sorry, I could not introduce myself properly before. Uh, my name is Anugra Singh. 
I've been at, been with Guide One for three years now, initially as an intern and then now as an actual analyst. Um, and I've had the great opportunity of working with Delisa, who I'm presenting with here. So thank you so much, Delisa, for inviting me. And uh, I've only heard great things about IABA, and I think it's an absolute privilege and honor for me to be able to present in front of you guys. And I hope I can share as much knowledge as I have about personal branding and experience with you guys. So let's kick it off. Um, I, I absolutely love this picture because um, I think when we think of building, there's a lot of things, you know, like, but the way I like to describe building a personal brand is it's like taking care of a plant, you know, the way you take care of it, the way you water it, the way you look after its needs and constantly evolves as it's growing. Um, I think that's how you have to take care of your personal brand. That's how you build your personal brand. And we're going to go more into the details of exactly what steps you can take to build your personal brand. Um, so before we actually get into the steps, I want to clear something. And this is, you know, hearing this presentation could be intimidating for some people, especially as Lisa said, you know, you, you don't have to be an extrovert. So anybody who's an introvert in this group uh, does not have to think that, oh, how, how am I going to have a personal brand? What's my personal brand? Well, great news. Anybody can have a personal brand. You don't need to have a certain personality style to have a personal brand. You don't need to be an expert. You don't need to be a celebrity. You don't need to be a company um, or anything of that sort. As long as you're willing to put in the effort and you follow the right path, in doing so, which I'm going to, which I'll try to the best of my ability to share with you guys. I think anybody in this group can build a personal brand. Now, we absorbed a lot of information so far in this presentation, uh, kudos to Delisa. So I wanted to make sure that I keep the actual process as simple as possible so that as you go, go after this meeting, you know, leave, think about what we talked uh, in this meeting, I just want you to remember four simple words about how you can build your personal brand. And I love SWOT analyses for that reason. So it's your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. And I'm gonna individually focus on each one of those. Uh, let's start with strengths. So what are you good at naturally or based on your experiences? So the first step of doing the SWOT analyses of building your personal brand will, would involve doing a reflection, you know, understanding who you are, identifying your strengths. So you have to sit down, you know, you have to look at your projects, whatever you worked on, things you like to do. Uh, what are you something that naturally comes to you? You know, what, what, what's, what's that one thing that stands out about you? Something that your family highlights about you, your friends talk about you, anything, you know, just identify your strengths. That's part one. You have to identify your strengths, things that you're naturally good at, or things that you've picked up along the way in college, in high school, at work experience, whatever work that, that may have been. Part two, weaknesses. Now, similar to strengths, it's equally important to recognize our weaknesses. We have to know what are the areas that we need to work more in? You know, what are the things that we can improve upon? Because you have a set of strengths and you have a set of weaknesses. I'm pretty sure all of us here can, can come up with something that we may not be so good at. But it's very important to identify and write down. You know, if, if you're somebody who likes to write down their thoughts, write down, have a list of, similar to a pro, pros and cons list, have a list of your strengths and a list of your weaknesses. Think about it, you know, put some mind into it, spend some time thinking about, um, again, you can reflect on your projects, you know, your work experiences. Think about, oh, what, what is this one skill that could have, help me do that specific project or work better? Or, you know, what is something that's stopping me from, from growing in my career? So it's very important to identifying those strengths and weaknesses. Now, moving on to part three, opportunities. So what do you do with, after you've identified your strengths and weaknesses? Well, you have to find opportunities where you can further improve and enhance your strengths and skills, and two, areas and opportunities where you can improve upon your weaknesses. So you've done your analyses, you've done a lot of reflection, you've talked with people, you've come up with a list of strengths and weaknesses. Now it's time to find opportunities to apply 
you know, that to, to, to do some hard work, basically. You have to pick up some skills, you know, to improve on your weaknesses. That's, that's, the, that's the purpose of opportunities. And, you know, kudos to all of you guys here. You've already had a head start. You're part of this organization. You're in this meeting. That means you are looking forward to improving and building your own personal brand. So I think you're already on, on your way. You know, you we're not starting from scratch. The fact that you're in this meeting means that you're taking up that opportunity to, to work on your personal brand. So you already know the SWOT analysis, right? It's just a matter of me just repeating it to you, kind of putting it in a visual presentation and reminding you that, you know, just remember these four words. Now, finally, part four, threats. Um, as Delisa said, uh, and you know, we saw in, in, in a previous slide as well, it's a process. Personal brand is it's a process. Building the brand is a process. You will constantly have to evolve. Once you've identified your strengths, weaknesses, found the opportunities to work on those, it does not come to an end. It does not mean that you have a perfect personal brand. It will constantly evolve as you grow in your career. And Delisa also mentioned that your personal brand today will look different uh, in five years, right? So it's, it's very important to identifying those obstacles and strengths because our goals are constantly changing. Your goal uh, right now might be, let's say, finding a job, right? So you have to ident identify what are the obstacles? What are the threats in my way that, that's stopping me from getting that job, right? And later on, your, uh, your um, goal might be to get a promotion within that specific job or maybe doing a career change or changing job, whatever it is. You have to always be thinking about what are the obstacles that are in my way to success. And once you do that, you repeat the process. You identify your strengths, you identify the weaknesses, and you find the opportunities to work on those weaknesses and strengths and further get better. So it's a constant cycle that, you, that you're going to be in, and that's how you build your personal brand. Now, in the next slide, I'm actually going to share my own personal experience because I'm still out of college. I'm, 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 you know, I'm, I've recently been out of college, and I've been through this process, and I'm still in the process. So I want to make sure that I share my personal experience to make it, make it as relatable as possible to you guys. Um, so talking about strengths, um, since high school, you know, since middle school, I, I've been very you know, I, I, I love public speaking. I, used, I love talking. I love being part of conversations, very outgoing. That's, that's my, my strength. Um, but, but it took me a while before I realized that that's my strength, right? And I'm challenging you guys today to go home after this presentation and start thinking about your strengths. So I had to, re I had to sit down and make a list of the things that are my strengths. And one of them, I'm only gonna talk about, touch on one or two, but mine was communication, right? And then I moved on to weaknesses. When I was in college and I was studying uh, mathematics, I actually did not have any technical classes, you know, classes where I would pick up any technical skills. I didn't have R, Python, any kind of programming classes. So I realized that, you know, that's, that's something I should be working upon. That's something I'm not very good at. Maybe something, you know, I wanna pick up as a skill. So I identified that programming or you know, technical skills such as R, Python, et cetera, are my weaknesses. So I identified my strengths, identified my weaknesses. Now moving on to opportunities, when I was in college, I wanted to take my communication sort of to the next level to where I can, you know, I can proudly put it on my resume and talk to people about it and you know, something that stands out about me. So I started looking at opportunities and my university, thankfully, uh, they do TED Talks every year. And um, as rigorous as the process is, I still signed up for it and went through the interview process and, and was selected to be one of the TEDx speakers. Uh, it's actually my TED Talk is, is on YouTube, so you feel free to watch it if you guys want. But, um, but I identified those opportunities. You know, okay, I have a set of skills. Just because I, communication was my strength, that did not stop me from further enhancing it or taking it to the next level. So I enrolled myself in those opportunities where I could further enhance my strength. Now, weakness, as you guys already know, there's a bunch of courses online, a bunch of resources online, talk about EDX, Coursera, 
uh, LinkedIn learning, all sorts of things. You know, there's a world full of um, uh, resources available to us now. You know, at a click of a couple of buttons, we can get find a course on whatever we want to. So I started looking at courses where I can learn those programming skills, where I can pick up, you know, the, the software that I wanted to learn. And I really started spending more time on it, right? So I identified the opportunities to further improve my strengths and work upon my weaknesses. And finally, threats. So while I was doing those things, you know, I was still, I was part of an organization uh, similar to you guys, and I was at a job fair. And, um, you know, I started talking with people. I, I was talking to recruiters, just trying to get a better understanding of, okay, what are some of the things that I still need to work on to be able to get that job? You know, what are, what are some of the obstacles still in my way uh, that are hindering, you know, my success, you know, my getting that job that, from moving to that last, last interview? So I, 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 I identified those things and then started, started the circle again, you know, identified my strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities. And I constantly do that, you know, every three months or six months, I do a reflection on, on myself that, okay, what else do I need to learn now? so that I can do this project better than what I did last time, right? There, at work, you'll be doing a lot of things that will be very repetitive. You will have to do them every month, maybe every quarter. So you wanna make sure that you're always evolving and always getting better at doing that same, same project or same kind of work. So I hope this, this example helps you guys get a better understanding of um, how you can build your personal brand. Now, we'll take it a step forward. Um, so, okay, you've done your SWOT analyses. What next? You want to make sure that you have some sort of a brand mantra. Now, brand mantra, I, I, I don't mean to make it sound intimidating, but it's really just for you to understand yourself, you know, and as clearly and as concisely as possible. Uh, and that's the, that's the purpose of brand, brand mantra. It should be simple. It should be to the point who you are, it should communicate your purpose, your personality, and it, sh it should be significant. And don't be intimidated by the word inspire. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be a leader, right? Your, your brand mantra doesn't have to be about leadership. It's, it's, it simply has to be significant so that when you tell somebody that this is your brand mantra, um, you know, they're impressed. They're, they like you. You know, they, they want to know more about you. Um, and one, one great example I, I, I wanted to add to this slide it was Disney. Disney's brand mantra is fun, family, entertainment. You know, a lot of you guys might have visited Disneyland, Disney World, might have seen Disney movies, and it's all about fun. You know, one, when, the one thing that comes to mind when you think of Disney is the cartoons that you grew up with, you know, the good times you've had with your friends and family watching Disney movies, etc. So that's how they communicated their brand mantra, right? That's their, that's their brand is fun, family, entertainment. Now, I also wanted to add my own brand mantra here for you guys to, again, feel, you know, relatable because, you know, Disney is a company. What about if you're an individual? So my brand mantra is approachable, initiative, and inspiring. By approachable, I mean, I like to build communications, you know, build relationships with people so that they, they feel invited. You know, they feel like they can approach me for anything, be it working on a project or having any kind of conversation. So I want to make sure that people feel that I'm approachable. Um, initiative, I love taking initiative. You know, I can't, I can't count how many times I've, you know, done my projects and be like, you know, maybe we can do this better by, by probably using this tool, by probably automating a certain piece. So always, I'm always trying to take initiative to make the processes better. And finally, inspiring. And I think my being in this in this presentation and speaking with you guys should be enough example to to show that I try at my best to make sure that I'm I'm inspiring, motivating, you know. And and uh, that's that's really what I hold true, uh, hold very close to my heart is making sure that I pass on the message and pass on my learning to other people. So th that's kind of my brand mantra. And I'm going to let Delisa also talk a little bit about her brand mantra, uh, and then we'll move on from there. Thanks, Anagra. So I came up with three words uh, that 
cover my strengths, uh, as well as what I try to live by each day. So connecting and collaborating with others, that speaks to my strengths and interest. While acting with purpose is just something that I believe in and I'm continuing to grow into every day. So I think the combination of these words is a great reflection of what I like to think of as my North Star and highlights where my career is and where I would like to take it moving forward. So it's a little, also a little bit forward thinking too. Awesome. Thanks, Julissa. So before we move on to this slide, uh, this is a personal statement slide, I would actually encourage you guys to come up with your own brand mantra. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be three words. If you can come up with two words, that's okay. I would encourage three, but just top three things that you can come up with and be like, okay, you know, these are probably the top three things that, that um, highlight me, you know, that, that make me stand out or are my strengths or whatever. So just a quick exercise for you guys to um, come up with something. And I think it would be a great, great, great thing to discuss also in this forum. You know, we can talk more about it and don't worry about how, you know, articulated it is or how, you know, sophisticated of a word it is. Just, just make sure that um, it's the three words, two to three words that describe you. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you guys a minute or two here. Uh, just whatever you guys can come up with, either unmute yourself or uh, you can add it to the chat as well. Awesome, wow, we're already getting, getting um, a couple of these. So Emmanuel said that uh, approachable, helpful, encouraging. Yeah, I think, I think those are great words. Um, and those are very good qualities to have. You know, you wanna make sure you're approachable and everybody loves people who are helpful. And so, and encouraging. I think those are amazing words. Great job. Let's see. I would encourage more people to also jump on. Yes, yes. Do not be shy, guys. You guys haven't been shy for weeks. So please, please take yeah, advantage. There's no, <laughs> yeah, there's there's no point system. We're not grading anything here. It's just it's just an exercise, right? Greg said that he's a problem solver, inclusive initiative. Amazing. I think I think those are those are spot on. Those are really good 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 things to add to your brand mantra. All right, couple of really good really good mantras. And I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily say that any brand mantra is wrong. I think you can always tweak, you know, you could have probably lack of words, but you can always tweak and make it, make it um, interesting. So Theodore said that he's approachable and fun. Um, it's awesome. We're getting more and more. James, I see you said smile more with me. That's, I think that's a great that's a great personal personal quality to have. I would, however, encourage you to. Um, I think the purpose of this exercise here is we're trying to get three skills that will build your brand. So that let's say you go into an interview and you have to describe yourself, right? What would be those three words that you use to describe yourself so that? You know, an employer is like, oh, yeah, maybe, you know, you seem like a really nice guy uh, that, that we could use in our team. Uh, we're getting more positive, adventurous, helper, diverse, adaptive, friendly, motivated. I think these are great inputs, guys. Um, Delisa and I, when we were talking, we didn't expect, you know, these <laughs> many, uh, this much engagement, but we love it. This is awesome. So how and oh, Emmanuel asked a great it? question. Yeah, yeah. How and where can we use our mantra on our LinkedIn page? So I will actually answer that question, Emmanuel, in the in the next slide. Um, so let's actually jump on, just so we're respectful of the time as well here. Um, let's keep moving. Now, in the next exercise, so this is personal statement, and this is where Emmanuel you will be able to, you know, use this on your LinkedIn. 
So you've done your SWOT analyses, you've done your brand mantra, you know, you've picked the two, three words about you. So what do you do with that? You're not just gonna walk up to somebody and tell three words about you, right? So this is where we encourage you guys to use those words, use your brand mantra and translate it into a personal statement. A personal statement is simply going to be a one-liner, two-liner, three-liner about you that describes you in a way that makes you stand out. You know, all the work that you've put in yourself, your strengths, your weaknesses, all the hard work that you've put, seeking opportunities, getting involved, it's time to summarize that. And so your personal statement is something that's going to further, um, further kind of take that brand mantra to a next level and explain it in a very articulate way. So let's look at a couple of examples. So I created my example. I think we're running short on time here. So we'll try to keep it to the point, but I converted my brand mantra into a statement, which, I, which goes as I invite conversations, uh, initiate ways to improve processes and communicate in a simple and effective manner. I think, you know, it's literally, I just took those three words and, and tried to put it in a sentence where I can describe myself to somebody at an interview or at, at a job fair, or even just a one-on-one -on -one interaction. And um, do you want to talk about yours, Delisa? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. I'll also be fairly quick too. Um, so mine is actually just a snippet from the introduction that I gave at the beginning. So I have, I enjoy finding opportunities to collaborate and creating systems for people to succeed. I may have not said those words explicitly, um, but that's what I had in mind when I was thinking about um, my introduction to you all at the very top of this particular session. Um, and so, yes, brand mantra, you know, if you're able to, um, use those words in your personal statement, obviously that's great. Um, personal statement is just a way to kind of tie, tie in some of those elements from your brand mantra and make it into a statement or maybe a series of statements. Um, so that's the example I gave. Um, obviously, you know, being a little bit clear on certain descriptors or words that tie back into you specifically really helps with like honing in on like what's important to you. Um, so whenever you think about your personal statement, you know, uh, obviously keep the brand mantra in mind. Uh, there may be some other things that you can also think about too. Like, why did I choose those words as my descriptors? What about that actually reflects on me specifically? So it, just to kind of help get the gears kind of rolling when it comes to actually coming up with a statement or a series of statements um, that ties back into your brand mantra. Great, thanks, Elisa. So uh, now answering your question, Emmanuel. So this is how, you know, when you go on your LinkedIn, there's a bio section where you, you know, you can add information about yourself. A lot of people talk about their experiences, their qualities, their achievements. You can add your personal statements to your bio, you know, because when a recruiter goes into your profile and looks at your personal statement, that's another reason, you know, we, we want to make sure that it's not just three words, you know, it ties in, it blends in well, and it describes you in a very articulate to the point way. So, you, yeah, you can totally use your personal statement on your LinkedIn uh, and even use it in introductions when you reach out to people to make connections, when you send them a personal message on, on LinkedIn, you know, you can, you can elaborate on your personal statement more if you'd like. Um, and that way they get to, they get a little snippet of your personality, basically. So I think of personal statement as a snippet of your personality. So I think, uh, I think we do have a couple of minutes. So I would, again, would like to make it a little engaging and make sure that, you know, we understand fully how to translate that personal, uh, that brand mantra into a personal statement. So I would encourage you guys Anybody who messaged, you know, in the chat with their brand mantra or anybody who did not either, uh, I would encourage you guys all to probably try to come up with a personal statement. Um, this is just think of it as a rough draft. This is not your final personal statement. This is just a one liner, two liner that describes you. And it's just a way to tie in those three words and put it in a sentence. So yeah, let, I'll give you guys a couple of minutes to think think about it. Uh, if you need help, please let us know. And um, but yeah, the 
uh, the two minutes I can start now and you guys can can brainstorm and come up with your personal statement and we would like to like to hear that. Thanks, Emmanuel. I'll, I'll, I'll touch on it a little later. I don't want to distract people, anybody who's still working on their statement. So we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to it. All right. Um, sorry if it wasn't a full two minutes, but um, I also want to make sure that we leave some time at the end for some Q&A. Oh, great. Thanks, Michael. Um, so I'm going to read it out for anybody who, who's not, who doesn't have access to chat. Emmanuel said that I am passionate about sharing my knowledge while staying open to new connections and ready to encourage others. That is amazing. I think that that's a great great personal statement. It took me much longer than that to come up with mine. I can tell you that. Um, so you guys are you guys are killing it. Uh, Michael said, I have a growth and positive mindset. I'm adventurous and always looking for opportunities. I think that's also great. Jacob said, I'm passionate about establishing myself as a force to be reckoned with in the conversations of the new economy as far as graphic designing is concerned. Wow, that's that's powerful. I think I think these are all great guys. Uh, Eric said, "I'm always on on the lookout for collaborating with others to come up with innovative ways to solving problems and serving communities." Once again, that's awesome. I think you guys had you guys got the point, or I hope so. Um, but yeah. these look great. I think I think you guys did an excellent job. Uh, these are the things you know you want to, of course. We didn't give you guys much time and you can, if, if this is what you can come up with in two minutes, I, you can further polish it and make it absolutely spot on. But these are great. So good job, guys. And I think we I have think one more. Are... Um, we had Greg as well, who has his hand up. Greg, Greg you, can, can you, you all hear me? Yes, yes, we can. We can hear you. Okay. Sorry, I know you kind of were concluding it already, but um, the one I, I came up with based on my uh, three uh, adjectives was I enjoy finding solutions to barriers of success, finding new ways to adapt to emerging trends and finding ways to uh, merge great ideas. That's really good. Yeah, that's really good, Greg. Um, I think I think you guys have got the point. Um, and and this is this is where we want it to be. You know, this is this is what makes Delisa and and I um i think feel good about this presentation is that you guys are already able to come up with your own personal statements and i can't wait you know if you guys when we if please send out connections to us on linkedin and we would love to see more and more personal statements or if you need help you can you know you can reach out to us as we'll share more contact information at the end of this presentation but good job guys and thank you so much for being being so engaging um and with that, I will actually hand it off to um, Delisa again to conclude this session and summarize everything we've talked about. Thank you, Anagra. Yeah, I am so impressed. I really am. Uh, that that was. I, th I think we got some really great examples um, over the last five to seven minutes on personal statements. That was really great. 
So let's see here. We've touched on a number of things around personal branding. And I really just want to leave you guys with some important takeaways before we close up. Um, so under the scope of what personal branding means, we touched on the three P's that are going to shape your brand. And so the three P's are personality, perspective, performance. Early on in your career, personality and perspective are going to have bigger contributions. And then your performance will come into play as you grow and you get more experience in your career. Moving on from there, your personal brand is going to be what separates you from the rest of the pack. So there is only one you. Allow personal branding to be an opportunity to focus on parts of yourself that you want other people to see. And then lastly, uh, this is really important too, Ana Grau walked us through a really great exercise to help you start thinking about your brand, which is really important. Um, we talked about the SWOT analysis. Personal reflection is very critical. It's a very critical part of that process. Being able to understand your strengths, your weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, and as well as being able to communicate those effectively and confidently, um, that's a great place to start building your brand. And so with that said, I will wrap it up there. I do hope you all have found this session to be valuable and I hope you also feel empowered to take ownership of your brand because it's a really important part of your journey. And like Ana Gras said, if you ever need any additional support, in this area, or if you have other questions, uh, feel free to reach out. Our contact information is actually on the next slide. Um, we would absolutely love to hear from you. And so with that, I mean, we have about five minutes left. We'll open it up to any questions with uh, our Q&A. Yeah, you can go ahead, Michael. Hello. Good morning, everyone. I hope you can all hear me. Yes, we can. Um, so my question is, what are some of the common mistakes to avoid when building your personal brand? Hmm. That is a great question. Sure, I'll give it a I'll give it a shot. Um, so what I heard, Michael, is that uh, your question is, what are some of the uh, common mistakes or things to avoid when building your brand. Um, I think the first thing for me would be to not make any effort <laughs> in building the brand. I know that's not really um, a great answer to that question, but um, I'm always on the side of, of taking action. I feel like sometimes we can get caught up on technicalities or we get caught up in our own brains and our own minds that we just simply don't put any effort or any work into it. Um, so I would say that's probably the, the first thing I would not do when it comes to starting building your brand is to, is to not, not act. Um, I think the other thing that's also really important too, I touched on this um, a little bit earlier and it's this idea of being consistent in terms of your brand and also in terms of like what you're putting out there or promoting about yourself. Um, obviously online presence is like a thing nowadays. And quite frankly, if you don't have an online presence, then it's actually like a little bit weirder. Uh, so, you know, the fact that you have an online presence and making sure that those things are kind of all synced up or making sure that if you have uh, kind of like a, a personal online presence, maybe making that separate from like your professional kind of online presence. I think that's also really important too, because oftentimes employers will look at kind of everything across the board. And um, obviously if you want certain things not to be seen, or if there are personal things that you don't want to be seen, just making sure that those are um, kind of squared away beforehand. Thank you very much. Anagraz, Anagraz, is there anything you'd like to add to that? Um, I think I think you touched on the important things. Um, I think the biggest mistake you can make is not taking an action. Um, and that summarizes everything. Um, I don't think I would say that any resource is bad resource. Of course, there are some resources are better than others. Um, 
and some opportunities are better better than others. But I think at the end of the day, as long as you're putting in effort, it'll pay off. Like and yeah, and, you know, it connects to my my example of it's like planting the 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 plant, like taking care of a plant. If you don't give it water, if you don't take care of it, it's gonna die. But you know, it's it's how much care you give is is what's important. I think Jacob also has a question, so we'd like to take more questions if we can. Go ahead, Jacob. We cannot hear you, Jacob. Jacob. I don't think he can hear you. I don't think he can hear us either. No, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> We can hear you. I think we can hear you. Okay, sure. Um, please, my question is, how can I leverage my experience to build my brand? Yeah, that's a, that's a great one. Do you want me to take that, Delisa? <laughs> sure, yeah. Yeah, so um, I think I touched on it a little bit um, when I was talking about building your personal brand. Leveraging your experiences, I think that is the key on building your personal brand. You have to do a reflection of some sort. And this is why I always like to have some kind of, you know, note. I, I always like to do some kind of note making on whatever project that I'm working on, whatever experience that I'm getting as I'm working. Because two years later, you might forget about, you know, what you did on a project. So it's always good to have have your notes. But you, I think it's it's the big the big piece uh, is reflecting on your experiences. So you have to sit down, try to go through the process. You know, like what are what were the steps that you followed when you were doing, let's say, a certain project. Now, what were the skills that were required to do that project? What were the difficulties that you ran into? What were the obstacles that you ran into while you were doing that project? And then, how did you overcome that? You know, what are, the, what are you, some of your strengths that helped you successfully complete a project? Or what are the things that you had to work upon to, come, to overcome the obstacle to be successful in that project? So I think you have to do that kind of analysis, you know, reflection on your experiences. And once you do that, you will start, uh, you will start to realize your strengths and weaknesses, which then you can further work upon to build that personal brand. I hope that answer answers your question. Awesome. Perfect. Are there any more questions? Okay, good. Yep, you said we answered the question. Good. Perfect. Um, are there any more questions for our speakers this evening? I know we're at time currently, and as they mentioned, uh, they have their LinkedIn tier, but I will be including it in follow-up email as well so that you all can have that accessible to you. Uh, but if there are no more questions, I do wanna thank our speakers for coming today and speaking with our participants, you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And yep, they're saying thank you in the chat. So we appreciate you all for being here today. And I'm gonna go ahead and provide the students, the participants, uh, with the information that they need, you know, to wrap up the boot camp. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and say that. So for the animal of the day, I know you all need this for your Google Forms for the ones that are submitting them. The animal is a dove. So the dove, like the bird, the white bird. Um, that is your animal of the day. And then the session attendance form for module nine closes tonight at midnight. Um, and module 10 will be due June 21st. Okay. And as I've mentioned um, in our last session, we do have some volunteer opportunities available. So let me know if you're interested. And also annual meeting registration has opened. So if you are interested in going to the annual meeting, you I will include that in the email as well, the follow-up email, uh, just in case you are interested in going. All right. And lastly, since, yeah, this is our last session. So thank you, thank you, thank you all 
for being with me, joining me <laughs> uh, from February all the way to now to June. So I would really, really appreciate you all for jumping on these calls and just connecting and engaging with our speakers. Um, I will be following up, as I mentioned already, with emails and some additional information. Uh, but if you have any questions at all at any point, please reach out to me. Uh, you all have my emails. Please do not be a stranger after this. Uh, I am here to help uh, with students and student programming. Okay, guys. So please take advantage of me and what all we bring here at IABA. Okay. All right, perfect. Well, so good. I'm so I'm kind of sad to say goodbye, but <laughs> I know we have to. So I hope you all have a good weekend. I mean, not weekend, good week. And stay safe, okay? All right, bye guys. All right, bye everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs> Take care. Bye. bye. I'm so sad. Thank you. <laughs> bye. Thank you. Thank you.